All right, uh, hello and welcome. This is SFU Math 232. It's Brenda. Uh, this is just a very uh, brief uh, review lecture just to sort of indicate uh, from me to you what I think are the important uh, topics that we've been uh, discussing. So I'm just going to do that. I'm not going to really be working through many examples. You guys have got lots and lots of questions to do. There's all the lecture questions, um, there's all the assignment questions, there's a couple of practice midterms, uh, there's uh, midterm review questions, uh, there's extra textbook questions, you got lots and lots of questions um, that you can do and in fact ones that you know the answers for and can check your answers for. So I'm just going to touch upon what I think are the important uh, topics. Uh, we are covering on this midterm, so we're on, this is for midterm uh, two, we are covering um, from section uh, 3.2 through to uh, 6.2. And that's with the including those sections. Um, there is uh, nothing on 5.1 or 5.4. Okay, so those applications that we had of the um, of linear algebra, those will not be tested on this midterm. So let us just uh, make a list, really, of, of of the important topics. Important topics, the way I see it, anyhow. Important topics that we have uh, seen. Uh, that is, uh, we saw the uh, concept of an inverse. Okay, that's clearly an important topic. That is, if we have a matrix A, then uh, some matrices, not all, so that's important to know, not all matrices are, are invertible, but some matrices have an inverse, which we indicate like this, and the inverse is means that if you take A and you multiply it by its inverse, you you get the identity matrix. So you recall, for example, the two by two identity matrix looks like that, and then that scales up. So the three by three one looks like that, except it's got it's a, it's three by three, and it's got it's got ones on the diagonal and zero everywhere else. Okay, so you uh, we have this concept of a uh, of a matrix inverse. Uh, you need to be able to find finding the inverse. Okay. Uh, uh, for, for which you can uh, use uh, Gaussian elimination, for example. So even though that was from before the midterm, you will need to know how to do Gaussian elimination if you want to uh, find a matrix uh, inverse. Uh, we also had here the concept of uh, the elementary matrices. Okay. Elementary matrices are easy to invert. So clearly an important topic, matrix inverse. Okay, what, what would be the sort of next uh, uh, important topic that would pop into my mind? That would be uh, the idea of the determinant. Okay, so what did we say? What, well, what is a determinant? What is this guy? So we want to know what that is. Uh, wh what, what do you use it for? Okay, that's another question. Uh, we know how to calculate the determinant of a two by two matrix. So that if we have the A, B, C, D here, and we want to calculate the determinant of that, um, then we know that that is A, D minus B, C. Uh, let, that, now that I've said that, let me say also, of course, we, we know what the inverse of a two by two matrix is. A, B, C, D to the minus one is one over A, D minus B, C. Um, multiplied by uh, d a and then minus b and minus c okay so we have that two by two cases uh is simple in in for both of these so we have um the determinant uh, we can calculate it in the two by two case uh, we can calculate it uh, for larger matrices uh, we used uh, a cofactor expansion Okay, oftentimes a determinant is extremely useful uh, at telling you things about other things about the other matrix. For example, is it singular or not? So these, uh, the, there's a, other things as well, but there, so the, it, it sort of characterizes the matrix in a certain sense. Uh, we did mention when we talked about the cofactor expansion that the complexity of computing a determinant that way is, is um, n factorial. It's kind of a, a, a difficult uh, computation. Uh, computational set, uh, problem. Okay, uh, what what else uh, did we uh, touch on here? Um, 
eigenvalues, clearly a major topic. Eigenvalues, eigenvectors, eigenspaces. Okay, so what are these things? How do you calculate them? What are they? Uh, how to calculate? So that's our, this thing, debt lambda i minus a. Okay, um, and we have here, this here, ax equals lambda x. Okay, uh, what do they tell you uh, about the matrix? Okay. So there's a, a computation of these things and understanding what they're about. An, an important topic. Okay, another important topic, linear independence. Linear independence. So, okay, what is that? And how do you tell if vectors are linearly independent? What is this? Um, how to tell? if vectors are linearly independent. Uh, the word span, what is span? So when you uh, look at uh, um, some number of vectors and you ask, what is the span of this? What does that mean? Um, so that's an important uh, idea, uh, subspaces. So if you have a space uh, spanned by some vectors, uh, what are the possible uh, subspaces? Uh, we had the idea of the uh, column space of a matrix and the row space of a matrix. Uh, what else? Uh, the meaning of linear. And then this came up in the context when we started to talk about linear transformations. So uh, linear means that uh, if we apply a linear transformation to the sum of two vectors, it is equal to the sum of the two transformations. Also, if we apply that transformation to a scalar times a vector, we get k times. Okay, so we, we you know what was the meaning of uh, linear. Um, we had the idea uh, of some, uh, the idea of something being norm preserving or dot product preserving. Um, we talked about uh, different types of linear transformations and um, what the matrices are for those. So we had the idea of a standard matrix for a linear transformation. Okay, so you should be able to be given a uh, uh, transformation algebraically and then be able to form the uh, standard matrix. And uh, and then we had here, uh, what do these matrices do? Um, they, they are able to uh, rotate, uh, reflect vectors, um, project. We saw, this specifically we saw the matrices uh, for doing this. Uh, we also had the idea of the orthogonal matrix. Okay, um, another topic, uh, uh, not, I guess, in fact, let me just, scroll up here to make sure I include this up here in this. I did say uh, sections, which is a true statement. And also then, I guess not in, in, the, in here, it's a bit of a disjoint set, it was also Appendix B, uh, complex numbers. There's a question uh, about complex numbers. So uh, we uh, need to have those things introduced to you at some point in your mathematical uh, development, and 232 is the place where we do that. So there is... Um, a brief introduction to complex numbers. Um, so what, what do you need to know how to, uh, how to do? I mean, complex numbers look like this, A plus B, I. That is one way of representing them. The other way of representing them, that's in the rectangular um, format. And then we have here in the polar format, where this is um, 
Okay, so you can go back and forth. We have the polar representation, and then we have the uh, rectangular uh, representation. So you need to be able to take uh, complex numbers and go back and forth between the rectangular and polar representation. You need to be able to add and subtract them. You need to be able to multiply and divide. Uh, you need to understand what the conjugate is. Um, what else? Uh, subtract, conjugate. Uh, oh, you need maybe to uh, draw where they are. Draw them in the complex. Draw them in the complex plane. Okay, so uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so where are we here? Now we've got uh, uh, the the meaning of linear, uh, the linear transformations, the standard matrix, the ge ge geometrically what is happening uh, when we multiply by a matrix, um, and then we have got the complex numbers. And then uh, I guess finally, the final thing I'll kind of say here, having sort of hit upon um, all of the major topics here, that uh, we have captured a lot of these things and the relationships between them, which is is, is important. So we have a number of topics um, that we've talked about, but they are related to one another, and uh, um, we have a unifying theorem about this. We have this big unifying theorem, unifying theorem. Uh, which tells us many different things. So I'm just going to refer to the version of it in the textbook that is on page 339. So this is in section 7.1, but that's we're not quite there yet. Uh, uh, don't worry, but uh, but you can take a look at that unifying theorem, and uh, you can see that uh, the first up until H, um, in fact, and also we've mentioned the column space and the uh, the uh, um, column space and the row space or the column vectors and the row vectors of a matrix. So really, uh, I mean, if you look on page 339, we have uh, A through H, um, which are important. Um, I and J are important, but they're in 6.3, so th that's not weird. And then K and L, K and L as well. The column vectors um, and the row vectors um, are linearly independent uh, when you have uh, some of the other conditions. Well, all, all of these statements in this unifying theorem are equivalent to one another. Okay, so that's clearly something that you should have in your mind so that when you see a problem, you can uh, use a, potentially one thing in the unifying theorem to get at something else that may be computationally more difficult to ascertain. Okay, I think that's really all. Um, that I want to say about this. We've just got a, a number of topics. Here they are. Um, you've got lots of practice. Midterms on Monday. Um, have a nice weekend. Bye.